New details tonight on the Valero Corpus Christi Refinery East Plant fire last November. We now know what chemicals were released into the air that week and how much. Yeah, that fire was contained that day and no injuries were reported. But as we learned tonight, the release of those chemicals didn't stop even when the fire did. Our Brandon Schaff joins us tonight in studio with that story. Brandon. Hey, good evening, Leslie and Rudy, and we're learning more tonight about that fire from a Texas Commission on Environmental Quality report. Now, the report revealed emissions that lasted 85 hours just about, releasing 32 pounds of hydrogen sulfide, breaking Valero's emission limit for that chemical, which is zero pounds. That chemical, one of several that exceeded the limit it's permitted for. I heard like a boom, you know, and I heard the building shake and then I, I really don't know what it was at the time. Adan Gonzalez works at the Barbecue Man, working the morning of November 3rd, 2022, while the Valero East plant fire was being contained nearby. He said nothing like that ever happened in the 10 years he's worked there, but hasn't changed his mind about how safe he feels. I'm pretty sure they're, they do their job and clean every, figure everything out, but uh, not really, not for me. I still feel safe around here. According to the TCEQ emission event report, emissions lasted 84 hours and 55 minutes. In that time, 10 fugitive gas emissions were released, gases that are not allowed to emit. The smallest amount of fugitive gases released, totaling around 1.5 pounds, all the way up to more than 821 pounds. About 2,951 pounds of sulfur dioxide were released. However, Valero's emission limit from its permit is less than two pounds. Gonzalez was not signed up for the reverse alert sent around 7:10 a.m. on November 3rd, instead finding out about the fire from his boss's son several hours later. The TCEQ report said the fire began around 5:50 a.m. He said he hopes the event will help speed up communication. When this happened, I mean, I guess like maybe three hours later, three or four hours later, we found out. So I don't know if there's a way how to make it where it's quicker and there's a possible way. And 3 News received a statement from Valero regarding the TCEQ's report. It reads in part, quote, regarding the November 3rd, 2022 incident, Valero immediately initiated its Emergency Operations Command Center and activated on-site and third-party resources to respond, mitigate emissions, and monitor air quality. 99% of the event-related emissions largely occurred at the beginning of the incident, and some reported emissions were due to the use of the flare during the controlled shutdown of the unit, end quote. Now, the statement goes on to say that air monitoring was conducted by the refinery terminal fire company in the surrounding area and results indicated no issues of concern throughout the event. Additionally, air monitors were placed in the unit and those monitors indicated no air quality issues. The TCEQ report also details the cause of that emission event, saying that a localized fire at the H2 system resulted in management of residual material at the faculty flare control device, and that the refinery utilized appropriate measures to control the event. Rudy, Leslie. All right, Brandon, lots of updates there tonight. Thank you.